Hello, and welcome to this lecture about machine learning on FPGAs. Several videos are available that show the design of a machine learning application for an FPGA, and there's also one on using video streaming. The code is available on GitHub, and in this video I want to show you some exercises that you can do to work with the code and to get better understanding. And uh, this lecture talks about several topics and there's a separate video about exercises for the sigmoid function because that's a little bit more extensive and you get a little bit more background about it. As an exercise you can improve the training of the neural network. In the lecture videos you saw that the results of the training are good but not perfect. Red taillights of the cars are detected as yellow, also bright green vegetation is detected as yellow and uh, this can be improved. Also the sky is sometimes detected as a blue road sign. So what you can do is uh, modify the training data. You can give more data that is not to be detected as yellow, so more red and more light green. And you can provide blue and yellow labels without the black and white letters. As an alternative task, you can detect different things, for example, the green vegetation and give totally different training to the network. You can work with the Octave code to improve verification of the training. Octave uses the training image to visualize the result of the training and can, you can use a different image for that. As another task, Octave uses floating point accuracy for its calculations and you can change this to fixed point to match the FPGA implementation. To work with the VHDL code, you can perform VHDL simulation and uh, there is a video that explains how to use a test bench and you can adapt this test bench for the neural network. As a second step, you can also make this test bench self-checking and um, there's another video that explains this approach. For the self-checking test bench, you need a reference image for the expected results. You can use the result of the bit true octave implementation, or you can save the result of a VHDL simulation and use it as a reference if you change the VHDL code of the design. And to work with the FPGA, you can increase the clock frequency of the FPGA. The FPGA has a timing requirement for 720p video, which is about 75 megahertz and you can increase that so that the FPGA is also able to process 200 megahertz and this is an investigation of the capabilities of the design. The remote lab will not require this high frequency, it's fixed to 720p video but it, it helps in understanding the design. As an approach you modify the timing requirements in the SDC file then you will get probably timing errors in quartos in the timing analysis and you can add pipeline stages and uh, also change the compiler settings. What you can do is compare FPGA resources and the power consumption in the remote lab. Please note, if you add pipeline stages in the design, you also have to add these pipeline stages for the control signals. There are more exercises for the sigmoid function so you can also look at that video. Thank you.